It's Brainwash with Dr. Tom and Guitar Picks with Brad Reeves. Jimi Hendrix. Oh, uh, yeah. Hendrix, like I said before, like Clapton. Hendrix is one of those guitar players that is identified with one name. And like Chet Atkins, people go, Chet, Doc Watson. People say <laughs> Doc, and everybody knows there's only one Doc. All right, so we're going to do uh, Rainy Day Hendrix. Like Clapton. Except I would say even more so because this guy was such an innovator. Mm -hmm. Hendrix is one of those guys that everybody still studies. Excuse me, I'm diddling with the amplifier a little bit to try to get the right setting for this song. The more I study his his music, and I do a lot of picking out Hendrix songs and Hendrix leads because um, when you teach guitar like I do... People bring in stuff. My basic approach to teaching uh, the guitar or the bass uh, is to get them playing what they want to play because that's the great motivator. You play music you love and you are going to pick that guitar up and your fingers will be on the fretboard until you, by gosh, get it, you know? <laughs> and and so I, I use that, that interest as a motivator. No Mel Bay books with me. But um, Hendrix is one they will... In inevitably bring in mm -hmm. i don't care if they're 13 years old 15 17 20 40 60 they're going to bring a hendrix song in eventually and you can guess what some of them would be purple haze hey joe little wing um uh, wind cries mary just to name a few i chose one because i remember when i picked it out and i'll just play just a little bit of it but it was a real it was on the album um Electric Ladyland, I think, is the name of the record. If he had had the major hits, the ones that I said, or, or some of those that I said had already been major radio hits, and he was very well established. And he comes out with this about face kind of record. All right, so we're going to do uh, Rainy Day, Hendrix. Hendrix is one of those guys that, that your current rockers still go back to and and listen to to try to figure out what in the heck was he doing exactly mm -hmm. and to realize how amazing the guy was played upside down and backwards from what i understand mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about a black guy that was from up in the seattle washington area i think up in that area uh, not a southerner and it was obvious because he had such a broad style mm -hmm. uh, he stole from everything uh, I mean, he had this sound. That's a whole lot different than... For style-wise, jazzier, you know, it's a jazzier feel, and the and the music with the bass is very jazzy. And some of these voicings, are really kind of R and B, but he apparently was stretching out more into the jazz kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Another interesting observation about his music after picking these solos out and things over the years is Wind Cries Mary is a perfect example. The lead solo that's in there. are straight ahead Nashville guitar picker licks. That could have come off of any Buck Owens record. They might have done it like this. Hear it? And this one. You hear a lot of that in the Eagles music and you still hear this guitar lick all the time. You listen to Nashville radio and you still hear that lick a lot. It's because it's a cool lick. It's why. 
There's been in Rolling Stone songs and been in luck. But take, give it to Hendrix, and he does something with it that if you didn't think about it, you would never even know that the guy's ripping off the Nashville musicians because <laughs> he was so melodic and skilled. But it's a wonderful song, and, uh, and it's definitely not country music. It's Brainwash with Dr. Tom and Guitar Picture with Brad Reeves of Brown Salmon, North Carolina. Antonio Carlos Jobim, One Note Samba. Another one, the New York teacher introduced me to this cat. And for some reason, I just didn't happen on him in Cullowee when I was at Western Carolina studying music. But when you're a singer, playing by yourself, a six-string orchestra, if you will, if you anything that you can do that will give that effect of uh of a full music sound mm-hmm. uh is desirable and um these these things gave me a more sophisticated version of that and I ended up writing some things in those styles once called um had enough of love and listen to these chord changes Here's a style thing. It's it's that big band fifties pre rock and mm-hmm. roll stuff. The chords. It also amazes me with the music that you know we're only talking about thirteen notes. There are only thirteen notes in the in the chromatic scale. Of course, mm-hmm. you have that repeated in the octaves, but you're only talking about thirteen notes that all of this music comes from. And the guitar is just a few octaves, and especially in the range that you generally play in when you're accompanying uh, a vocalist or a solo instrumentalist. And uh, it amazes me that we're able to come up with all of this different music. Imagine if there were only 13 colors, and you created all of the different visual arts from that. But uh, it's uncanny to me, but so it is. It's one of the phenomenons of music. (laughs) 